It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. Liverpool versus Everton. I can get the odds on my screen as you talk. Yeah, sure. but yeah Liverpool have now dropped outside the top four after that loss to Leicester. They're now sitting below West Ham. Uh, three losses on the trot, but maybe that win over RB Leipzig in midweek could give them a little boost. You never know. And Everton, only three points below Liverpool. So if they win this, win this, and they've got a game in hand too. So if they win this, they'll go level and have a game in hand. Um, but yeah, as you probably as you probably know, Nigel Everton's form hasn't really been that great either. They've picked up something like four points from their last five games. It's the performances though. The performances in them games have been really, really poor. Everton. Um, they started off the season really, very excited, scored, make creating lots of chances, scoring goals. Calvin Lewin was scoring goals. He didn't play. He wasn't even on the bench against Manchester City uh, the other day. And, and that's a problem for him. If he doesn't play, they, they take a large proportion of their goals. I, I was really, really impressed with Liverpool. You know, everyone had the right on the wall and they went there and they, they were they were superb. They went toe-to-toe with Leipzig and they defended well. And I think you've got to take your hat off to Liverpool. And I, I think they bounced back here. I think, And I think they bounced back here quite impressively. Um, if you look at Liverpool, you know, their record, I know, I know you don't really like, I'm not a lover of, history or stats. I don't really look much into it, but they're unbeaten in 24 matches at home against Everton. The last time they uh, they got beat by Everton, Cher was number one with, do you believe? That's how long ago it was. And if you believe, you've got, you know, you've got, you, you've got a long, long way to go there. But the thing is, I would turn around and say here, is, uh, Everton are in crisis in terms of injuries. Uh, Mina, the centre-half, hobbled off against Man City. He's out. Alan, probably one of their key midfielders, didn't play. Um, you know, we've got the goalkeeper, um, Pickford, as a liability, whether whether he plays or whether they go with the the new the other side, the other try, the other goalkeeper. Calvert Lewin didn't didn't play. And I think that Everton are, are a, a decent club on a one off day in in a in, in a big game. But without all those key players, and if you look at their performance data in the last three or four games, it's been bad. And I think Liverpool, you know, okay, they got beat by if you take away defensive mistakes by Liverpool. They haven't been playing that bad. They haven't been playing that bad. Against Leicester, they got beat by a seven-minute spell when the goalkeeper come out and they just made a howler and their heads completely went. Against Man City, they were in the game at 1-1. The goalie gave them two goals away. But, OK, the game's against Burnley and that. They're going through problems, but their quality side and they're playing their rivals who are in the middle of a huge injury crisis. Um, and I think Liverpool will win. And again, I'm going for the Asian handicap here. I, don't, I, I wouldn't bet Liverpool to win the match at four to nine, like one one um, at uh, one forty five, but I, I like the Asian handicap. Liverpool minus one, um, or minus one and a quarter. Um, Liverpool minus one is at uh, eight to eleven, so one point seven two, which is probably a little bit too short. But I would go for Liverpool minus one and a quarter, um, which is odds again, so you can get even money or bigger, which is obviously half the bet on if Liverpool win the games are pushing. The other half have they got to win by two goals. I just can't see Liverpool losing this game. I really don't. I think that I think it's a big time for them. Everyone's going to know how bad they are. They play Everton here, then they play um, Sheffield United and Fulham after that. And if they can win those three games, then they, you know, talk of them not being in the Champions League and talking about. I mean, they, they'll start getting players back. Jota will coming back. There'll be a few players coming back, and, and they'll finish the season strong. They can't win the league, obviously, but the talk of them being not in the top four is is crazy. I'd bet serious money on them finishing above West Ham. And I probably bet money them finish above Leicester because Leicester capitulate at the end of last season. And I think the market's a little bit too weak on Liverpool here. I think Liverpool are definitely a bit of added with all the players that Everton have got missing. Yeah, I quite. I was trying to find markets for Liverpool to finish above Manchester United because, I mean, they're, I don't believe though. I, I, I think still think Liverpool are by far the second best team in the league. But um, yeah, so looking at, yeah, Liverpool minus one, you can get, I mean, I assume you can get better prices than this on like your pinnacles or your exchanges, but yeah, you can get yeah. 74 at Unibet and minus 1.25. You can get 204 on Bet365. You get better prices on the exchanges, you reckon, Nige? Yeah, I mean, the trouble is with the Asian handicaps on Betfair, there's hardly any liquidity in it. 
So they, they, near a kickoff time, there might be something. But I think if you, you know, it depends what you want to do. I personally would go for my, minus one and get the push. So I'm cheering Liverpool wings. I think they'll win. It's the best way to get them. But if you want to get a little bit more juice in your price, go for the minus one and a quarter and, and have the half back. Just one thing I would say. I mean, I, I bet this at the start of the season, which was no real. I bet it at 10 to 11. So 1.9. Um, I bet Liverpool, Man City to finish in any order. And that was my biggest in the top two in any order. So Liverpool, Man City, Man City or Liverpool. It was 1.9 at the start of the season. That was my biggest anti-post bet of the season. And you can bet that now at 11 to 4. So um, uh, wow. 2.75. I think that's a big price. 3.75. Yeah. I think that's a big price. I was yeah. going to ask. Oh, do you think, because obviously I saw there, I'm not sure what the best price was uh, for a draw, because obviously I'm not sure if this is the same one you mentioned, but, you know, Liverpool are unbeaten in, was it the last 23 uh, meetings of Everton in all competitions, but 12 of those have been draws. In fact, this, this fixture is has more draws than any other fixture in the Premier League uh, throughout, obviously, since uh, its inception. And, like, what I've found with Liverpool is, I know everyone's been banging on about their, you know, their defence, and it's, oh, that's what we're struggling with, but, their attack's been off the boil as well most this season. It's looked quite... I, I agree with that. So, I mean, I, I was kind of... Is there... And I've sort of got similar thinking to... I think it might be my Man United played Liverpool and, and you sort of thought it might be a draw. And I was looking at this beforehand even thinking, well, a draw is a cracking price. I think I saw 4.6 on the odds uh, check when you were looking at it then. Is that not massively overpriced considering how often it, it tends to be draws and given the nature of both sides? No, Ancelotti has said Calvert-Lewin's going to be fine to start uh, in this one. So I mean, yeah, I'm but kind of I think me. I think the thing is with it is that yeah, the draw the draw does look a big price four points six four points, and we know why the draw is always a big price because it's always such a great result for book bookies. No one ever bets it. And I think there's yeah. going to be a lot of draws in the Premier League this week. So many other games, I think there's going to be a lot of draws. I think there's another yeah. podcast so today that's about draws. But I, I just feel that Liverpool have to go out and perform. They have to go out all out attack. And I feel that it's gone to the start of the season when they've, they've just got nothing else to lose. And, and, and I believe that this will be quite end to end. And I, and I personally believe if, if Everton were at full strength, I would turn and say, OK, I mean, Calvin Lewis come back, might come back, but how fit is he going to be? We don't know. I mean, he's missed a lot, quite a few games. And, and I think Mina, does, you know, Mina, not only from a defensive point of view, but from a, from a set piece point of view, he's dangerous from corners. He's dangerous from free kicks. Alan has been the rock in that midfield. He's, you know, James Rodriguez and Ricardo can get the praise, but he's just been the engine in that league in that division. And I think without those players, that's why I would probably go for Liverpool. Um, and I think they, they will. I mean, and they must take so much confidence in that Leipzig match because they were, you know, everyone wrote them off, including myself. And I thought they were exceptional. And some young players like Curtis Jones come come to age in that game. And I think I think you might see a resurgence for Liverpool now. And Klopp's very good at getting everyone in to believe in his philosophy. And when the black best managers perform well when everyone's up against them and they criticise them. And I think that you might see a resurgence in Liverpool's form at the moment. And their goal stats are they're they're actually good. Everything about them is good. And Everton is very, very low. And I think without those players, I think they will struggle. All right. Love the insight, Nige. Let's move on to George. Mate, your first pick of the Podcast, uh, you're taking me to France, mate. N- Nantes versus Marseille. Is that Nantes? How I would pronounce that? Yeah, Nantes. But, I mean, but before we begin, can you please just do me one favour and say Ligue 1 again? Ligue 1. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> but, uh, no, so yeah, that's it. I am going with uh, Nantes uh, home to Marseille. And just looking at it really, like, there's just ridiculous stats behind this for cards. Um, you look at Nantes, they're averaging 2.6 uh, per game at home anyway this season. You know, they're, I think, third bottom, so they're struggling. It looks like they're down and out already. They've just not got the quality, it would appear. Um, but no, they've seen two or more cards in seven out of seven home games when they face sides uh, who are in the top half. Um, and there's been a first half card in, in all seven of those as well. But they're the fifth most fouled side when playing at home per game on average. You know, they win a lot of fouls. So they try and make things happen. They're getting good areas. Um, they're just getting taken out a lot. They see about 13.2 fouls per game when they're playing at home. And then they're welcoming Marseille, who are just, this season in Ligue 1, I don't know what's happened to them. They're like the Getafe of Ligue 1. It's just ridiculous. You know, they've seen they've seen two plus cards in all six away games against sides uh, in the lower half. And they've seen three plus in five out of those six. They're averaging 3.3 um, cards per game away from home. And there's also been a first half card in five out of those six games that they've played away to teams in the lower half as well. 
and they commit the most fouls uh, away on average by some distance. You know, I think the next one, they, they commit about 15.3 fouls per game, whereas the next one's around 13.8, I think. So there's quite a disparity there. And watching Marseille this season, they, they just can't help themselves. They just can't help but commit fouls in dangerous areas rather than trying to, you know, you, you see it typically, you know, in uh, sort of lower league or local league football when it's like, you know, don't commit a foul. They're, they're not going anywhere. Just leave them where they are. Leave them where they are. They're, they're not causing any danger. But Marseille will just fly through the back of them. Like, it's, it's just ridiculous watching Marseille sometimes this season. You know, in, in the last game I did, I think, um, you know, I, I spoke about it on, on the channel and I thought Marseille were going to pick up the most cards and they finished the game with nine men and saw a couple of other bookings as well. Like, it was just insane. And the referee for this one is Amari Delarue. Um, he's awards around an average of 4.5 cards per game. And in his last 20 games that he's officiated, the away team has seen uh, 20 plus in 16 of those 20, so around 80%. And he's already shown uh, Marseille 40 booking points in the game that he uh, officiated for them this season. And that was a way to a lower half opposition as well. And uh, they, the t- I'm trying to remember the team it was, but you know, I know for I can remember they don't concede or don't see as many fouls as uh, Nantes do. So I think Marseille here for, for cards, it's, it's a given if I'm honest. Um, unfortunately, like last time, because with League 1, they don't seem to want to release... Where if it's Serie A or La Liga, they want to release the market straight away. But with League 1, it seems to be sort of the last one in the pile. So I'm waiting to see what the odds are. But again, for Marseille to three, see three or more cards, I'm wanting to see what that is. Because if it's... I personally think the lowest I take on that is probably about 1.8. But even so, I, I just I don't see that not happening, personally, um, given all of the kind of ingredients we've got for it. The referee... Not seeing how many foul, how many times they've fouled a game, um, so I w- I'd want to see odds on that. But any lower than probably about one point eight, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, one point any lower than one point eight, I don't think I'd take. But if you can get anywhere near evens, I'd get on that easily. So for yeah, Marseille to see thirty plus booking points in that one is definitely about I'm gonna gonna be looking out for. Yep. Okay. Awesome, mate. Uh, Nigel, mate, you're taking us back to the Premier League: Southampton versus Chelsea. Yeah, um, Chelsea are my best bet in the Premier League this weekend um, to win this game. You can get them at um, 1.8, um, but there's a couple of ways I like to play it. I like to, I also like them to win to nil, uh, which is around about. I was just showing what the price on the win to nil is, but the win to nil. But I'll give you the reason if you can get the win to nil for me, Alex. I tell you why I like it. I mean, I would see the two calls come in. Chelsea have defensively been rock solid. I mean, they've only conceded one goal. Since he's been in charge, and that was an own goal against Sheffield United from open play from any opposition hasn't scored. Um, he's changed the goalkeeper around, uh, but defensively they look solid. Um, the other reason I like this game is that um, the way that Southampton's form is recently, they've, they've lost their last five matches, and it's the manner of the defeats. They are creating hardly any chances. If you take Danny Ings away from them, I don't see where they get the goals from. And James Ward Prowse were set pieces. They're the only two for me who, who can score goals. And from a team that were really thinking that people could put teams to push for European places, their season seems to be lost in the Premier League. And their data is dropping down fast. I mean, so their, their, their stats are pretty poor in recent weeks. Uh, and their goals, they've conceded 18 goals. I know they scored, conceded nine against, Newcastle, against um, Manchester United. But any team that concedes three goals against Newcastle is seriously in trouble. And they consider three goals against against Newcastle. Every season in the Premier League, and George will say this, and anyone who told you from even back in the day when the Premier League first died, you get to around about Easter time, or just coming before Easter, sort of every time, there's always one team that just eases up and falls away with, with nothing to play for every year. Used to always be Charlton, always be Charlton. In years gone by, it's been other sides. I mean, Pop Bournemouth were a perfect example of that sort of before they got relegated. They always fell away. And Southampton could really fall into that category because they have got everything on the FA Cup. They've been drawn against Bournemouth in the FA Cup, an FA Cup quarter final. They could get to the semi final of the FA Cup. They've got nothing to play for in the Premier League. They're in 13th position. They can't make the European competitions, they can't make the bottom. And if you look at how their games are being priced up now, the, the the market is dead against them every time they play it because they know that their, their, their stats aren't as good. And they, they're a side that already now have got their their, their espadrilles on for the summer holiday in Dubai. They're, they're, they're easy enough. They're, they're properly easy enough. And I think Chelsea go here and do a very, very professional job, a very, very typical Chelsea job, uh, what they do under uh, Thomas Tuchel. And I think they win one or two nil 
I love the four to five on Chelsea to win uh, the match, but I also love that two to one on Chelsea to win to nil. Yeah, so Chelsea to nil. You can get as high as 3.1 on Bet Victor, as you can see on my screen here. A few bookies there at, at th and then the 1x2 market I can get up. Yeah, you can get 1.78 on the exchanges. One point. Well, that, that, that price is coming down because this morning it was 183, 184. I bet, I bet it this morning. I also took some uh, 1.75 fixed odds as well because there wasn't much liquidity around there. And I, I mean, I'm, the, I, 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 I'm not the best in predicting closing line value, as, as you're aware. But um, I do believe that uh, that price will come down because I just feel that Chelsea, Chelsea have got some huge momentum. Chelsea believe they can finish runner up. Chelsea are informed team other than Man City in the Premier League in that top half. And they're going about their business quietly and officially doing what Chelsea have done for years, winning 1-0, 2-0, job done. And I think at the going into the second half of the season, like the last third of the season, sorry, I think if you, you're you down the bottom or any team you can play in the Premier League, Southampton would be high on your priority list because they're a side with nothing to play for. And all for them is the FA Cup, everything. I yeah. think to be fair, I think Chelsea could they could potentially finish runner up. I mean, what Thomas Tuchel's done well is he's come in, he's done exactly what's been required with what he's got. For example, for me, I I couldn't couldn't believe it when they signed Ben Chilwell for fifty million quid. Ben Chilwell is not a fifty million quid fullback. The amount of times I watched him and you see him sort of slowly dribbling back as a winger's just flown past him and he's just left his space there. I don't know what they did, but obviously since Tuchel's come in, he's put Alonso back in there who looked like he was out of the side and out, out of the club under Lampard. Obviously you've got Hudson Odoi who's been like that wing back and it just seems to be working dividends for them. He's just got them working efficiently and doing what they should be doing. So I think it was a great appointment. I could, I could potentially see Chelsea finishing runner-up with the way things are going. If Liverpool don't well, the, pick up them, I think they could. The, the, the only slight um, negative towards them is again going back to the point of Manchester City, Chelsea play Atletico Madrid in the Champions League on Tuesday night. And that is a massive yeah. match. That is yes. a huge, huge match. And my only one, my only, again, I can see Chelsea winning one or two nil and taking off of that. And the other thing I like about Chelsea, if he plays, I think Timo Werner, he's had so much criticism and he's been useless. You know, everyone's missed so many chances, but the guy is quality. And he's a young yeah. lad and he's come to Premier League. He hasn't taken his time. The amount of chances that boy gets and the pace he has, right? he will hit four towards the end of the season. And if the manager trusts him and he's got the manager's back, now he's going to play week in, week out. Once he starts scoring, he's going to be a frightening proposition. And I think I think Chelsea will go on a run here. Yeah, yeah, right. I agree. Uh, so lowest price you take on Chelsea, mate? You can't really get 1.8s anymore. You have to go below that. I, I took, I took 1.75 with William Hill. And um, I don't think that price will be there come kickoff time. All right. Terrific, mate. I think it'll be one point. I think it'll be one point eight five. <laughs> <laughs> Going by I'm your joking. form, probably. I, 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 like I, I, exactly, I, exactly. <laughs> I know exactly. But I do think I do think that one point seven five will be under pressure. All right, cool, mate. Fiorentina versus Spezia, my man. Yeah, this this is probably well. I think this is my game of the weekend. To be honest, this is one I'm really looking forward to. Uh, so you've got Fiorentina, you know, they're, they're struggling uh, in the league. They're only, I think, seven points uh, off the relegation zone, which, you know, this is a Fiorentina side that, you know, I think they're playing European football not that long ago. They're a, a very, they're a cemented side in, in Serie A, if you like. And so, and that's kind of in danger this season. They welcome Spezia, who, despite, you know, Spezia are just, I think, two points ahead of them in the table. So a win here would see Fiorentina leapfrog them and sort of put a bit of distance between them and the relegation zone. But, yeah, obviously, again, for cards, Spezia are my favourite Serie A side for them. You know, they commit more fouls than anyone else in the league. They've seen more cards than anyone else in the league. They're just utter filth, basically. Um, but yeah, Spezia see 2.7 cards per game um, away from home. They've seen two plus in six out of six away to other sides in the lower half. You know, three plus in five out of six as well. Um, but the problem with Spezia is they just can't defend well. They don't know what they're doing. They're not a proper, proper unit. I mean... In fact, the one time I've seen the defend well this season was the last game they played um, against AC Milan, where they won two 0 which was unprecedented. No one thought it would happen, and they did really well there. So they're going to come into this one full of confidence. But I think, in terms of motivation, Fiorentina are going to want to put a number over on them, um, simply because of the league position, and they're going to want to put that distance between uh, the relegation zone. And as I said, obviously, uh, on quite a few podcasts we've had actually said, you know, after you've had a massive high, you tend to have a massive fall. And, beating AC Milan 
was a massive hire for them. You know, Vasey Milan were, you know, they're second in, in the league. Um, so to get a 2-0 victory win, and they largely dominated that game as well. But going back to obviously these two, you know, Fiorentina are, are very good um, on the counter. So I think I think the game will start off quite tentative, but I think Spezia will feel like they can, uh, you know, do something to him. But like I said, Fiorentina on the counter against the Spezia side is going to think where this game's going to be won or lost. And, uh, and Spezia just cannot defend against set pieces, counter-attacks. They're awful at defending at wing play as well. So I can only see Spezia picking up a hatful of cards here. Um, the referee is Gianpaolo Calvarisi. Um, he averages around 4.38 yellow cards per game. And in fact, the last 20 games he's officiated, um, you know, the away side has seen at least a card on all 20 occasions. Um, so, you know, and as well as that, both teams have seen a card, um, I think, in at least 18, so around 90% of those games. So, obviously, their basic stats, just to give you an idea in terms of which way cards are likely to go. But, yeah, Spezia, they just see so many cards all the time and they're usually a quite a safe bet for me. So, there's kind of two different... Um, oh, sorry, the one angle that I've got on these is I've got Spezia to see 30 plus booking points and also to see a card in the first half. You know, they've in games where they've been playing away to sides also in the lower half, there's been a first half card in, in five out of six of them. And some of those have been against teams that, you know, don't actually see many fouls. Whereas Fiorentina, you know, they themselves see 2.2 um, cards per game and playing at home. So I, I don't see how this one. I know it's easy to say, I don't see how this one loses, but I think it's got a very, very good chance. And I think at 11 to 10, um, so I think that, what's that, yeah, 2.1, that's yep. that's overpriced. I know you think 30 plus is a high line, but for Spezia, it's really not, and particularly in uh, Serie A, it's not either. So for me, I'd be having, if, if this was, I'd say 10 to 11, I'd be wanting to get on this one. So 11 to 10, um, yeah, this is, that's a, I'm happy to take. So Spezia, 30 plus, and, uh, and there to be a card in the first half. And just to recap on booking points, it's normally, for most bookmakers, it's normally 10 for a yellow. Is it 20 or 25 for a red? Yeah, that's great. It's usually 10, pl 10 plus, well, so it's 10 booking points for a yellow and then 25 for a red. 25 for a red. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, anyone looking to place card bets, that is useful info to have. But it sometimes can change by bookmaker or is... Yeah, you can have a look on the bookmakers sort of like conditions and what they class as it. For example, I think like a straight red would be, you know, 25 plus... Um, and obviously, if you get double booking, so if it's two yellows, I believe then that yellow is taken off, turned into a red, so that makes it. It's, it's complicated, but it'll all be on your. Um, if you've got whichever bookie you're betting with, they'll list it out all on there. If you just search for that, they'll be yep. able to tell you how to do it because it can vary between bookies. Awesome. And before Nigel falls asleep, mate, Ipswich versus Oxford, you're taking us to League One. Yeah, I know, I know you don't like us going down to the lower levels of uh, English football, but. Um... Oxford are my one. team in this level. Well, Oxford are my team in this league. Um, I don't know if anyone, of, if, if you've followed me on Twitter or anything, they've only seen told us about time. twenty times, mate, that you've backed Oxford in the anti-post markets. Well, I backed them again. I backed them again. I backed them again this morning at twenty-five to one. I backed them again at twenty to one. But I've, one of the one of the bets, I've got them at 300, 250, 200, 150, 100, 80, 66, 50, 40, 33, 25, 20, and sixteen. And I, and I bet at the start of the season at 12. And um, I think if they win, it, you know, I've never come on this show again, that's a certainty. But um, <laughs> so you you, 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 you should be cheering them. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, though, um, they are the best team in this division. They are the best team on all the data, on all the goals, goal XG, on all the goal scoring chances. They are the best team in this division. And they are in some serious form at the moment. They've won nine of the last 10. The game they lost was against Doncaster. They lost 3-2, but they had about 16 shots uh, in that game, about 10 on target. The goal XG was phenomenal, and they just couldn't find a way past them. They're full of confidence. They've been behind in two games and come back and won in the two, one in the two second half goals of the weekend. They were behind again uh, at uh, Rochdale. we are going into the 85th minute, and they scored two goals. They're a young side. They're a hungry side, and they were the best team last year in League One. When the season got stopped and they weren't allowed to get into the in the player position because of the points per um, where, where the points per game system come in, but they are on fire and they're up to eighth now. And honestly, it, they've got they got Portsmouth on Tuesday night. If they beat Portsmouth and they win this game here at the weekend, they're going to be single figures to win this division. I'm not I, I, I'm telling you, and they they are on such a roll. They play Ipswich this weekend, and I, I played the unders in midweek, Ipswich v Northampton. It was a game that's famously everyone's going to remember because the referee 
put put his head in at uh, at the Ipswich centre forward at the Ipswich forward. Um, but the game itself was absolutely. I watched it. It was nil nil. It was absolutely diabolical. And Northampton are the worst team in this division, who haven't scored in eight of ten matches or sake. And and Ipswich couldn't score past them. If there was fans in the stadium, the the manager Paul Lambert would have been booted out, booed out. He would have been gone a long time ago. He's in his job because they can't really afford to get rid of him because he's on a five year contract. But Ipswich are terrible. And against the top teams in the division, they're even worse. I mean, I think they've played something like the 10 top, 10 top half sides they've played this season. They've only taken one point, and lost nine and one draw. Um, they are just, they're just bad, bad side. And they don't score any goals. They've got, they've got, they've got a guy sent off in the game, Flynn Downs, he's suspended midfielder. Um, and they're just all over the place. And Oxford are on fire. This morning, this morning, Oxford were 2.4 to win this game, which was absolutely ridiculous. I bet them at 2.4, and I bet them again at 2.3. Um, Coral were 2.3, were and I backed them again. Now they're 2.2. I, I don't know how low the market's going to go. I, I mean, I think when, I, when I've tipped Oxford up before, the market's bounced back when they come down. I mean, there's a lot of people who are, are obviously seeing Oxford and betting them. And, and then, but, you know, with 48 hours to go, the market could come back. It may have hit its lowest here. But from my point of view, and just from my odds making, I make them even money to win this game. So I don't know where the market is going to bounce back. But from my opinion, off my tissue prices and what I saw of Ipswich in midweek and their record against the top half sides, I make Ipswich even money. And if you can get 25 to 1 to them each way to win the division, which was with Victor, with Victor Chandler this afternoon, that's a ridiculous price. Portsmouth, if they beat Portsmouth on Tuesday night, they go above Portsmouth. Portsmouth are 5 to 1 to win the division. Oxford are 25 to 1. And I'm telling you, Oxford on a neutral ground off the ratings of next year against anybody in this division, they'd be favourites. They, they'll be favourites, and um, I can't believe I can't believe that they're uh, the price they are. Two point two is now. We missed the boat on the two three and two four. I think it's value. Whether it, you might get a bit of value come kickoff time and the market bounces back, I'm not so sure. But just from my data and my odds compilation, I make them evens. Yeah, I've gone over to the Trade Mate Sports Game Center because we obviously offer a lot more books than Odds Checker does, and yeah, you can still get two point three on Coral and Ladbrokes. So, I mean, yeah. I'm assuming by the time this comes out, those prices will probably be gone. That, I can guarantee you that 2.3, won't. That, that's, that, the, the 2.3 will definitely not last. If you're looking for some value, that 2.3 will uh, will definitely not be 2.3, come kick off time. That's yeah. the bet. I mean, yeah. on the exchange now, on the exchange now, then I think you can, you can lay... You can lay them at 2.28. So it's 2.24, 2.2. It's only in small money, like 19 quid and 20 quid either side. And when the liquidity comes in, I don't know where it's going to go. But at 2.3, honestly, that's just, that's, that's just a, that's, that's a fantastic thing. Yeah. So I'm assuming you make them a two, $2 shot. So if they get down to, you know, 205, 210, you're still happy to take them. Yeah. I know. And I, 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 this is my argument, what I was trying to say to you before on here, I mean, I make my prices and I, and, I, and I will take whatever's above it. So if, if I take a price at 2.3 and make them two and they, and, and they bounce back to 2.4, I'm not too disheartened because I make them two. But obviously, a lot of them go the other way. But I do my, I, I, I just pick six or seven games, eight games on the, on the back of what I I think. And people sort of quite critical of me on saying that the market on the, um, on the Asian market, on the, on the, on the, on the Premier League is solid and you can't you can't beat it kind of opinion. I get that. But on League Two and League One, I feel that I have an edge over because the market's nothing. This is what well, how many how much money is going to be bet on this game on Betfair? 150 grand compared to a, a Premier League it's 50, 30, 20, 20 million, something like 15 million, something like that. So I believe that I I can make that price move in my favour with my money going into the market in a very, very small amount. And I just think the 2.3 is wrong. All right, terrific, mate. Last game for today, George. Keeping us in Italy, mate. Lazio versus Sampdoria. Yeah, again, so this is a, another good game uh, coming from Serie A. So you've got Lazio. They're currently sitting in seventh, um, actually, just outside the European places. But only three points separates them from third position. Um, so they need to kind of kick on, really. And they're obviously welcoming Sampdoria, who, again, it's kind of going to be a nothing season for them. You know, they're safely in, in tenth. 
know, they're not going to be going down, but I don't, they're not going to challenge anywhere near the top or for Europe either. So, um, but yes, yeah, so obviously Lazio, you know, they've, I think they're, yeah, they're actually um, just looking on the thing here. Yeah, they're, so they're the second worst discipline side uh, in Serie A. So they've seen two or more cards in seven out of seven home games against other sides in the top 10. Um, they've actually seen three plus in five out of those seven as well. But the opposition's also seen two plus uh, in seven of those games. Um, and then looking at Sampdoria, you know, they st- they're still very high up there as well. Just looking, yeah, so they're they're the third most uh, ill-disciplined side. Um, you know, seeing two or more in four out of their five away games against uh, the top half sides. And there's been a first half card in, in five out of five of those games as well. But the other reason I really like this one as well is looking uh, at David Massa, the referee. So he averages 4.88 cards per game. Um, you know, both teams have seen at least one card um, in 19 of his last 20. In fact, the only one that that didn't happen was in a, a nation league, a nation's league game, which was kind of irrelevant at the time. And <clears throat> but yeah, so looking at this one, there's a few different angles that I actually really. Well, there's a couple of angles I really like. So similar to the non Marseille game we discussed earlier, both teams to see two or more cards in the first half cards as it evens. I think that should be about four to five or, or one point eight. So I think that's massively over, <clears throat> overpriced. But I was also looking at um, the sort of first and second half averages for, for Lazio. So they're averaging one point five cards in the first half when playing at home, and around two in the second half. But for some, for some reason, I don't know why it's this price because it should not be that price. You can get over evens for Lazio to see a card in both halves. Um, and I think just the reason I think Lazio are going to be picking up these cards is you know the way Sampdoria are. Lazio are awful at defending on the counter, and Sampdoria are going to have absolutely no choice but to you know to be playing on that counter attack if they want to get anything from this game because Lazio are going to dominate the much better side. You know, they are one of the best sides in the in the division, um, and Sampdoria, you know, they're just not. I don't think they'll be able to match that. I think they're going to be penned back and be looking to to break on them because that's the only option that they've got. And watching Lazio this season again. They're another one of these sides similar to, to Spezia. You know, they, they can't help but dragging people back, trying to gain that advantage, try to break up any opposition attack um, in order to stay in the game. And, you know, I, I just see I see Lazio picking up another few cards in, sort of staying towards the top of that discipline table. So, yeah, you can get Lazio to pick up a card in, in both halves at uh, 21 to 20. So, I'll just let me just double check what that is for you. So, yeah, that's what, 2.05. Um, and the other one was both teams to see 20 plus booking points in the first half card that exactly evens. So those would be my two punts for this game. Awesome, mate. Brilliant stuff. Uh, we'll quickly summarize best bets of the weekend. Nigel, mate, you can kick us off. What's your favorite out of all of your picks? It's got to be Oxford at 2.3 to win away at Ipswich. Ipswich struggling for goals, managers lost the dressing room, team terrible record against the teams in the top half. Oxford absolutely flying, head at top of all the metrics, and um, I think they'll, I think they'll score at least two goals. I think they'll win two nil, three nil, that comfortable. Well, he loves it. He loves it. George, mate, what's your best? You're giving out a few today. Yeah, after after much deliberation, and I'm hoping that uh, another first half card doesn't ruin the whole weekend for me. But uh, I'm. I've got to be confident in Spezia thirty plus booking points, and for them to see a first half card. Uh, um, eleven to eleven to ten, just over evens. So yeah, that's what was that two point one? Your decimals, yeah. So that's my favourite bet of the weekend. Spezia thirty plus, and to see the first half card. Look forward to it, gents. You can find these two men on Twitter at C George Gamble and Sealy underscore Nigel. Check out George's new YouTube channel. It's called George Gamble. And check out Nigel's tips to service Premier Sports plays. 